we should ask God to increase our hope when it is small, awaken it when it is dormant, confirm it when it is wavering, strengthen it when it is weak, and raise it up when it is overthrown. There is no worse screen to block out the spirit than confidence in our own intelligence. The torture of a bad conscience is the hell of a living soul. True wisdom consists in two things, knowledge of God and knowledge of self. A dog barks when his master is attacked. I would be a coward if I saw that God's truth is attacked and yet would remain silent. The gospel is not a doctrine of the tongue, but of life. It cannot be grasped by reason and memory only, but it is fully understood when it possesses the whole soul and penetrates to the inner recesses of the heart. The pastor ought to have two voices, one for gathering the sheep and another for warding off and driving away wolves and thieves. The scripture supplies him with the means of doing both. No one can travel so far that he does not make some progress each day. So let us never give up. Then we shall move forward daily in the Lord's way. And let us never despair because of our limited success. Even though it is so much less than we would like, our labor is not wasted when today is better than yesterday. There is no knowing that does not begin with knowing God. Men are undoubtedly more in danger from prosperity than from adversity. For when matters go smoothly, they flatter themselves and are intoxicated by their success. A perfect faith is nowhere to be found, so it follows that all of us are partly unbelievers. God preordained, for his own glory and the display of his attributes of mercy and justice, a part of the human race, without any merit of their own, to eternal salvation, and another part, in just punishment of their sin, to eternal damnation. All the arts come from God, and are to be respected as divine inventions. Without the fear of God, men do not even observe justice and charity among themselves. The whole world is a theater for the display of the divine goodness, wisdom, justice, and power. But the church is the orchestra, as it were the most conspicuous part of it, and the nearer the approaches are that God makes to us, the more intimate and condescending the communication of his benefits, the more attentively are we called to consider them. We are not to reflect on the wickedness of men, but to look to the image of God in them, an image which covering and obliterating their faults, an image which by its beauty and dignity, should allure us to love and embrace them. However many blessings we expect from God, His infinite liberality will always exceed all our wishes and our thoughts. Let us not cease to do the utmost, that we may incessantly go forward in the way of the Lord, and let us not despair of the smallness of our accomplishments. Those who set up a fictitious worship, merely worship and adore their own delirious fancies, Indeed, they would never dare so to trifle with God, had they not previously fashioned him after their own childish conceits. Seeing that a pilot steers the ship in which we sail, who will never allow us to perish even in the midst of shipwrecks, there is no reason why our minds should be overwhelmed with fear and overcome with weariness. In forming an estimate of sins, we are often imposed upon by imagining that the more hidden the less heinous they are. For there is no one so great or mighty that he can avoid the misery that will rise up against him when he resists and strives against God. The Lord commands us to do good unto all men without exception. 
though the majority are very undeserving when judged according to their own merits. The scripture teaches us that we must not think of man's real value, but only of his creation in the image of God, to which we owe all possible honor and love. For it is better, with closed eyes, to follow God as our guide, than by relying on our own prudence, to wander through those circuitous paths which it devises for us. Faith is ultimately a firm and certain knowledge of God's benevolence toward us, founded upon the truth of the freely given promise in Christ, both revealed to our minds and sealed upon our hearts by the Holy Spirit. All whom the Lord has chosen and received into the society of his saints, ought to prepare themselves for a life that is hard, difficult, laborious and full of countless griefs. He who has learned to look to God in everything he does, is at the same time diverted from all vain thoughts. God orders what we cannot do, that we may know what we ought to ask of him. And ye peoples, to whom God gave a liberty, to choose your own magistrates, see to it, that ye do not forfeit this favor, by electing to the positions of highest honor, rascals and enemies of God. Prayer unaccompanied by perseverance leads to no result. To make intercession for men is the most powerful and practical way in which we can express our love for them. The only who is reduced to nothing in himself and relies on the mercy of God is poor in spirit. Yet consider now whether women are not quite past sense and reason when they want to rule over men. The cross of Christ only triumphs in the breast of believers over the devil and the flesh, sin and sinners, when their eyes are directed to the power of his resurrection. The whole life of man until he is converted to Christ, is a ruinous labyrinth of wanderings. Indeed, how can the mind by its own leading come to search out God's essence, when it cannot even get to its own? There is no inconsistency, when God raises up those who have fallen prostrate. They who strive to build up a firm faith in scripture through disputation, are doing things backwards. For the word of God is not received by faith, if it flits about in the top of the brain, but when it takes root in the depth of the heart, the heart's distrust is greater than the mind's blindness. It is harder for the heart, to be furnished with assurance of God's love, than for the mind, to be endowed with thought. Prayers will never reach God, unless they are founded on free mercy. Our true wisdom is to embrace with meek docility, and without reservation, whatever the Holy Scriptures have delivered. Without knowledge of self there is no knowledge of God, without knowledge of God there is no knowledge of self. Undoubtedly the dress of a virtuous and godly woman must differ from that of a strumpet. Philosophers are like a traveler passing through a field at night, who in a momentary lightning flash sees far and wide, but the sight vanishes so swiftly that he is plunged again into the darkness of night, before he can take even a step let alone be directed on the way by its help. Men in prayer give greater license to their unlawful desires, than if they were telling jocular tales among their equals. This is how we can distinguish true religion from superstition. When the word of God directs us, there is true religion, but when each man follows his own opinion, or when men join together, to follow an opinion they hold in common, the result is always concocted superstition. True and sound wisdom consists of two parts, the knowledge of God and of ourselves. 
We carefully conceal our abundant vices from others, and we pretend they're small and insignificant. In fact, we so delude ourselves, that we sometimes embrace our vices as virtues. When? Let us, however, remember this truth. No one has made much progress in the school of Christ who doesn't look forward joyfully both to his death and the day of his final resurrection. If grace acts in us, grace, and not we who do the work, will be crowned. For so blindly do we all rush in the direction of self-love, that every one thinks he has a good reason for exalting himself, and despising all others in comparison. All the blessings we enjoy are divine deposits, committed to our trust on this condition, that they should be dispensed for the benefit of our neighbors. God tolerates even our stammering, and pardons our ignorance, whenever something inadvertently escapes us, as indeed, without this mercy there would be no freedom to pray. God does not measure the precepts of his law by human strength, but, after ordering what is right, freely bestows on his elect the power of fulfilling it. He who is most deeply abased and alarmed by the consciousness of his disgrace, nakedness, want, and misery, has made the greatest progress in the knowledge of himself. We are enjoined whenever we behold the gifts of God in others, so to reverence and respect the gifts as also to honor those in whom they reside. Our wisdom, in so far as it ought to be deemed true and solid wisdom, consists almost entirely of two parts, the knowledge of God and of ourselves. For we never have naked and empty symbols, except when our ingratitude and wickedness hinder the working of divine beneficence. It is therefore faith alone which justifies, and yet the faith which justifies is not alone. Those whom the Lord favors not with the direction of his spirit, he by a righteous judgment consigns to the agency of Satan, 